Greetings and welcome to the Friday Morning Vodcast podcast. Why is a mouse when it spins? That truly is a question we all need to ask ourselves. How are all you Billy Bumblers doing out there today, out there in the TV land? I suppose it's internet land nowadays. Didn't have anything I really wanted to talk about this morning, but I did want to mention how much work putting together these uh, gummy bear episodes is. When you film at extended periods of like two hours, uh, you know, and you're trying to usually whittle it down to about a 15 minute show or less uh, that just doesn't happen sometimes so i do apologize for the length of the last two videos no you know what? i don't apologize i like the way they came out and it's this is my channel so can you hear that when i make a raspberry sound that's the funny thing about compressing and limiting sounds when you're trying to reach this spectrum in volume and um I notice sometimes when I'm editing these and I go back, I hear little things that I'm like, oh, I said that there, but apparently I fucked up. <laughs> uh, it's almost the weekend, so you know what that means? Today is Friday, and Friday is the Bad Batch. And if you're a Star Wars fan, then you're probably waiting in intense... Inten <laughs> and if you're a Star Wars fan, you're probably waiting in anticipation for the episode to... How did the kids say it? Drop? Or I guess they don't do that anymore, do they? Like at midnight, it probably becomes available. That's the funny thing when television turned to streaming. It was, it, it, to me, it was a subtle thing because we had cable um, because we ran an Airbnb for several years in our basement. And so it was the cheapest, easiest, and most secure form of allowing someone to have some form of visual entertainment when they came to stay at our house without having to risk passwords or anything like that, like giving them Netflix. I'm sure, given the time and effort, we probably could have figured something out and set it up, or even just, you know, paid for a separate account and saved money, because cable sucks. Um, I wish I could just receive the internet through the, the waves in the air, and they could come into my brain, and I could just project and visualize everything I wanted to on the wall. To be completely honest, I'm sick of all these cords and paying for them. Actually, I guess you still pay for things that aren't corded anymore. Like our cellular devices. The cellular devices that control us in our daily routines. It's truly sad. I've talked about this before, so I'm not going to get into it again. But, but cell phones are funny, like they're a blessing and a curse. Uh, where, you know, you have the world at your fingertips. Accessibility, communication but you just stare at pictures of cats or videos of dogs humping or something. I, I don't know which, I don't know what you do, but that's what I do in my free time. Nothing like videos of dogs humping. I'm going to live to regret saying that 20 years from now. They're going to be like, Mr. Oliver, Mr. Oliver, do you see this video? Do, do, is it true? Do you like watching dogs hump? And I'm going to say, no, I, I say dumb things. Sometimes I don't mean everything I say. You shouldn't listen to me. You should be nice to people, but don't listen to me. I don't know any better. Anywho, who had a rotary phone in their house? My friend Mario, uh, who uh, is a drummer, and we played in bands together for many, many years. Uh, maybe a decade, maybe over a decade, I don't know. I'd have to go back and do math, and it's too early in the morning for math, so you're going to get a story about telephones and Mario. Mario had this mustard yellow, faded mustard yellow rotary dial phone up in his living house. Now, Portuguese people, not all Portuguese people, I'm not trying to throw you all under the bus. I was once one of you. However, Portuguese people usually have a house that they live in or an apartment that they live in, in a house, and then a house that you just don't touch, except for maybe the holidays. But even on the holidays, they cover everything in plastic. I don't know if every every nationality does this. I think this might be like a, uh, like a Western, Southwestern European thing. I, it might be Spanish too. I, I don't know. I don't want to judge the Spaniards. Anywho, he had this phone. So before cell phones, uh, when I first started playing with Mario, we practiced in his basement. And if I needed to make a phone call, I had to go up two flights of stairs from the basement into the apartment where his mom lived, who spoke very broken English. 
sweetest lady in the world, always bringing us treats down. I tell you, people, we, we eventually made our way over to the studios, and the studios are a, were a beautiful place. They're not, they're not what they were when, uh, when I was younger. But um, people often asked, why, why do you guys not come over to the studios? And I'm like, well, Mario's mom brings us treats and Cokes. Is somebody going to do that for us at the studios? No, because we're all grown men here and women. And however you identify, it's going to be a long time, I think, before we get to the point where society uses terminology that can encompass everybody. Let's get back to the phone thing. Anywho, rotary phones were, if you don't know what they are, here's a picture of one over here. What you had to do was stick your finger in whatever number hole that you needed to dial and turn it clockwise till you hit the little metal stopper. Then you let go and it had to ring back. Then you do the next number and that's how that worked. And I swear to God, I'm not kidding when I say, I feel like I did my taxes over a rotary phone once, but I don't think that's possible. I don't think there's any way to register those. And that, that, that's, that's funny, the sounds that were related it, with it too. Like um, if I can find an audio clip, here it is right here. Sometimes it's the, the old sounds that I miss. Like when I hear an ice cream truck, like that is something that has been consistent throughout all these periods. I, I'm, sh I'm pretty sure all the way back to the 50s, maybe even earlier. I don't know. I, there was ice men. That's probably how it started, where you didn't have refrigeration at home in the, in the 50s, early 50s, um, unless you had a lot of money, I'm sure. And so the ice man would come around and he'd chip off ice for the kids and give them to the kids in the neighborhood. And sometimes I, I, I just paint this picture in my head of that moment. And I'm like, man, what a beautiful time to live that you probably didn't realize. And, and I suppose it's even the same for us right here now, even going through COVID and everything we're dealing with in our day and age, racism and uh, everything going on with the police and government and like, we still don't realize how beautiful it is to be alive. Like it, being alive is something special. Like not everybody gets to do it. Like sometimes today, for example, some people aren't going to get to do it anymore, but you will tomorrow morning. You'll wake up, but you know what? Some people won't. And I think that that's when I say live life to the fullest and love every moment of it, that that's truly what I mean. Like it's hard. It's not easy when you're working a 40 hour week or, you know, taking care of a family or, or whatever it is. It's not easy to stop and do that. But if you can, if you can get into a habit of it, just, just step outside for a few minutes, enjoy the air, leave your fucking phone inside. Sounds back to sounds. <laughs> I'm not meaning to get up on a, you know, my soapbox and shout out this morning. It's just, I, I let the winds take me sometimes where they will. And today, my heart and my mind felt very open, and, and I felt comfortable sitting and doing that. Sometimes I have to go to books. Uh, oh, what do we have here? Here's an interesting book. I bought this for one of my kids. I don't remember when. And thankfully, it's very large print, so I don't really need my glasses. So I thought maybe it'd be fun to wrap this up with one of these today. Before I get to that, my, my point being is that the senses truly encompass memory. And I think if you can find the smells and the sounds of your childhood again, it really will invoke that, that youth-like feeling in you. And, you know, never letting that inner child die. That's a good way to try it out. Start every day realizing that you're mortal, that you were given a gift of being alive today, not by anyone in particular. And look for smells and sounds. They all sights. Look for anything that will entice your senses and provoke memories. And you'll never grow up. At least not like Peter Pan did. Okay, after a 10-mile run... Okay, these are all would-you-rather questions, by the way. I don't, I don't plan on doing a lot of these, but um, they're funny. So, And they're fun. We get to spend a little bit more time together before I have to let you go. Before the sun comes out and before I melt away. Would you rather... After a 10 mile run, have a drink, have to drink a gallon of hot coffee or a half gallon of cream. Gallon of coffee, hot coffee after a 10 mile run. I don't know what it feels like to run a 10 mile run. I'm sure a lot of you do. Um, some of you ran in school. I believe uh, my good friend uh, Frank was a runner in school. Did you ever do a 10 miler, Frank? Frank, if you did a 10 miler, 
and you're watching this video, do me a favor. Say, you know, hashtag 10K <laughs> or something. However, I have run in my life. I've been out of breath. I remember once, I'll tell you a story. Um, it was me, my friend Kelly Johnson Smith, Melissa White, and Eddie Razor. We were all walking around one summer and it was super hot. And somehow, and I, and I hate to be sexist here, but men sometimes try to compete with each other. And for whatever reason, it was super hot. We'd been walking for miles down the railroad tracks. And um, me and Eddie decided to see how long we could go without drinking something. And uh, I don't remember who won, but I remember at one point thinking, hey, an ice cube is a solid. It's not a liquid. And, and that's when I threw in the towel. Yeah. <laughs> you like that story? So uh, that doesn't answer the question, though. I mean, I like coffee, but I don't like it with sugar. So, I mean, I guess I could do hot on a hot day, though. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes it has the opposite effect on you. Like, I remember when I was in Massachusetts, like, there's a Dunkin' Donuts. You can't throw a rock without hitting a Dunkin' Donuts. And, and so it was rare to not have a coffee in my car next to me on the desk in my hand when I'm walking around. Um, so hot year round doesn't really bother me drinking straight cream sounds gross to me like I, I used to make my white russians with cream but now that i try to avoid dairy altogether uh i use almond milk let's do one more of these let's do one more question and then i'm gonna let you guys go for the day have you guys been enjoying the gummy bear incident uh series i really hope you have because uh to experience it was was awesome um, in, in a weird way and to edit it's been really hard uh, in a fun way and part three I think will be the most exciting because we're going to end up with an end result that will truly show you our reactions to nine million Scoville right to the old kisser let's go with this what do we got here all right I hope you know what I'm not going to do any more of these because I'm actually going to burn this book I don't like this now I really don't like this this is upsetting to me would you rather clip a homeless stranger's disgusting toenails? Which, I just stopped right there. I was just like, how, who are you to judge that a homeless person has disgusting toenails? Like, there's a good chance. But you probably have disgusting toenails too. Mine aren't the greatest. I try to maintain them to the best of my ability, but, I mean, they're way down there. I mean, now, since I've lost a little bit of weight, it's a lot easier. But before, whoo. Fuck that. Or just rather not do it. And look at this question. Would you rather eat a, new, a newly born baby rodent? I'm done. I'm done with this bullshit. Maybe I'm being a little too critical on this book here. I mean, last one. Oh, I don't even know. I don't like this one, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to answer it to the best of my ability. Would you rather have your spouse be disappointed in you or have your child be disappointed in you? I have to say spouse, um, I mean, I don't want to disappoint anybody, but when I disappoint my kids, it brings me to a real dark place. Like when I realize I've done something so terrible that they're disappointed in me, um, I just want to crawl up in a ball and die. Like the, it, it's soul crushing. Not that it doesn't have the same effect with my wife, but certainly with my kids, I don't know what it is, but they control my emotional hemisphere i love them so unconditionally that i can't explain how those feelings and words really like uh, i mean I'd, I'd die a thousand deaths for them i'd take a million bullets i'd i'd live a lifetime of torture if i had to just to make sure that their lives were perfect geez that's a real real somber note to end on so <laughs> uh eat a bag of shit. how about that <laughs> all right Thank you guys for stopping by and checking out these out. If you love and watching these as much as I am loving making them, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, and hit that little bell icon. It'll let you know every time I put out a new video. <laughs> Don't forget to make somebody smile today and take care of each other out there. I'm Jason Oliveira, and I'll catch you in the next episode of the Vodcast Podcast. Take care, and boy howdy.